Welcome back to HPE Discover Barcelona 2025. I'm here with my sidekick, Ryan Schrapp. Not sure what he does, but he's my sidekick. Good to see you, Ryan. Thanks for having me, I guess, <laughs> yeah. But the really interesting folks at the table are not Ryan nor, nor me. Uh, we have Trish Damkroger from HPE and Safi Fischoff from AMD. Welcome, both of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Good to see Great you. to be here. Trish, yes. you've yes. done a lot of cool stuff with AMD. We do. You know, but one of the, the, the big ones is um, the number one leader in high performance computing, El Capitan, and all sorts of other stuff. But talk about how you're leveraging those things that you've engineered together to scale AI into the future. Yeah, so, I mean, not only number one, we also have number two together with Frontier at Oak Ridge National Lab. And, I mean, that partnership has been for years that we've been working together, and it just continues to grow with some of our announcements we made this week at um, Discover. Can I talk about that? You sure can. Oh, good, okay. <laughs> so, we announced Helios together, so we're going to be one of the first suppliers of Helios, and it's exciting because we're also bringing in our Juniper as in our scale-up switch as part of the Helios infrastructure yeah. with Broadcom. So it's a great partnership, and this is just one of the things as we go towards liquid cooling, dense racks, you know, doing big, important things. Yeah, it's an impressive system up, up right at the front of the show floor. We got to take a look at it. It's it's been the highlight of uh, I've seen a lot of people taking photos with that with that. Yes, platform. it is pretty impressive. It is. Yes. It is. Safi, I'm curious from from an A and D perspective, as you look at uh, you know what currently exists in the market, what you're announced here, and you're talking about what are these innovations and technologies that A and D's bringing to the table that is really helping drive you know this success in the top 500 list these successes going forward in these new sovereign deployments what's what's the amd vision for this yeah i mean first of all thank you trish and to hpe for being our longtime partner in hpc and compute and ai uh, just generally the partnership as you said it's been going on for a long time and the results speak for themselves number one number two and something like six of the top ten yes the further you go the more machines you find uh, of amd and hpe partnering together but our vision really, I mean, Trish mentioned Helios, which is AMD's rack scale reference design. The first one built on fully open standards. And our belief is that having an open ecosystem is better for the community and it's better for customers and it's better for the industry overall. And as, as Trish said yesterday, uh, Rami on stage here announced that HPE is gonna be building the world's first scale up ethernet switch built fully on open standards. It's going to be HPE's hardware and software. Uh, and so this ecosystem we're building, which I'm sure we'll get to Lux in a second, um, is just expanding. Broadcom's Tomahawk 6 is in it. HPE will be bringing the scale-up switch, and they'll be part of the reference design uh, on the compute side as well. And um, OCI at Lux has been announced as our partner. So more people are contributing. So our vision, I think if I could summarize it, is all of us are smarter than any one of us in this space. Do, do you feel like the openness uh, of kind of this partnership that you have and kind of the designs that AMD goes with as well lead to more acceptance and kind of these sovereign government uh, integrations? Is that an important piece for them too? It's a, it's a good question. And sovereign, you know, in all the meetings I've been in here has continued to come up. We had a session this morning on defense and security and, and some other topics. And, you know, when you have an open standard, it means that the people that are using the data, you know, if you talk about security, you have data in motion, you need networking security, you have data at rest that needs to be encrypted, and now there's also data in use. Um, and that was a place, there was, let's say, not as much openness, and as a result, you could imagine, it was not as comfortable for certain entities or organizations on the sovereign side right. to go with these closed ecosystems. So now contrast that with being able to open that up and saying, hey, we're gonna bring those folks who wanna build a sovereign system into the conversation. Hey, contribute your security piece to this. Let's make you feel comfortable. We believe together with HPE that that's going to accelerate the adoption of these machines even more quickly from a sovereign perspective. Yeah. So big news over the last couple of weeks, it was in, in the form of an executive order in the US, it was revealed that you know, we're undertaking sort of the next Manhattan project, if you will, um, you know, the Genesis mission. And, uh, and we've recently learned that HPE and AMD are going to be part of building out some of these systems 
in our national labs, and not just in the US, but we're talking about sovereign systems in Europe, it's a big deal. So um, the first question I have for you, Trish, is who's the person who thinks it's a good idea to let you near a national lab? They're gonna steal you away. Oh, They're gonna no, take no, you no, back. No. I think they've tried that already. They're gonna yeah. steal you away. No, I'm having too much fun. Okay. I'm not gonna go back. But tell us about what's going on there in terms of you know what you can share about, about the role that AMD and HPE are playing in this kind of mission to the future for AI. Yeah, so I mean, there was two systems announced um, at Washington DC. One was the discovery system at Oak Ridge, which is that follow on to Frontier. Uh -huh. So this is more in our traditional space. It's going to do HPC and AI. The convergence of HPC and AI has happened. And you know that's just part of what we do every day, uh, our bread and butter. But the other really interesting was the Lux system, which is a public-private partnership that AMD, I mean, I have to give Lisa Sue and the AMD a lot of credit for really driving. They've asked us to provide the infrastructure for the Lux system to OCI. So it's a, it's, as you say, it's broadening the, our partners as we're delivering to the nation what is needed, this critical AI infrastructure. Beyond just these supercomputer announcements, I think are super exciting. No, no pun intended, They're really right? Cool. Uh, and and are kind of massive. You also announced this week the XD six eighty five, I believe, right? So it's a it's a platform for these large scale kind of AI training, right. HPC type workloads. I'm curious if you could talk about how that platform, what kind of markets does it address? How is it different or similar to what we've talked about with Lux uh, and other other platforms? So I mean. So Lux is based on the XD685. So it is going to be part of that with the MI355X. And I'll, I'll let you talk about all your amazing technology, but it's got the AMD CPU and GPU that's going to be delivered. And that's an eight-way system. Um, you know, not so versus these rack scale, this is your more typical put into your 19-inch rack um, with the different systems. But liquid cooled, you got to do the liquid pooling because you're going to want these dead systems. I mean, you've only got so much space and oh, so much power. So it's got that. So yes, we announced, uh, we released the XD685 at the beginning of this year, mm. and we just continued to deliver it. I mean, it also has the MI300X in there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so both air day and liquid cool. So it's just a continual innovation along that way. So but the eight way to the rack scale with Helios. I mean, any, anything yeah. in terms of the, those technologies that are in that platform? I mean, I, I'm very curious, again, outside of these kind of massive large scale deployments, how a platform like this as an eight way solution is, is useful for moderate size enterprises, I guess I would say, and allows them to scale as well. Just to build on what Trish said, I mean, I, I completely agree and even like taking a step back, I think the Lux machine is an example of this public-private partnership that, that you touched on. I mean, a lot of the larger supercomputers take many years right, to deploy. For yeah, that's right. And Lux really just came as an idea relatively recently and was announced and will be deployed very quickly. So I think it's a great example of how a public-private partnership um, can end up accelerating things like deployment times and then times to being able to access these machines. and. Um, Lux in particular will be partly open and partly closed, partly for government use, partly for scientific use. So it's a, in some ways a hybrid machine, but it's a nice bridge for those moderate sized organizations who are trying to figure out what do they want to do from an AI perspective. What, what we've seen is the largest companies have so far been the fastest to adopt a lot of the AI technology, um, but the smaller ones are still trying to figure it out. So I think there was an announcement a couple of days ago, maybe it was a couple of weeks ago, 90 to 95% of AI POCs fail to meet their initial objectives, which is great. To me, that's good news because it means folks are trying stuff out, they're failing fast, and they're continuing to move forward. So the learning is accelerated, and these types of POCs are the things that can be run on Lux, on the XT685s, um, because it is the most advanced technology now. It's got the latest AMD GPUs, it's got the latest AMD, uh, our turn CPUs, it's got the latest AMD networking technology on Pensando. So, now, because it's a public-private partnership, a lot of these en entities you talked about, these mid-sized companies, yep. are going to have access to it. And once those POCs get traction and start taking off, because I, I do believe we're kind of early in the AI revolution, let's call it, 
once folks have a better feeling for what they want to do, they can go out and buy any number of XD685s or other platforms from HPE um, to help their business achieve their objectives, which is really what this is all about. I love, I, I love your perspective on that MIT study that you're that I was you're referencing. Say, MIT study, MIT but so we many have some people. other studies. Wharton just came out with a new study that yeah. isn't as dim. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I'm gonna Venmo you for the Wharton comment there. <laughs> okay. But but yeah, so exactly, and things look a lot rosier, but your assessment of that is very optimistic. But yeah, and the the Wharton survey showing people kind of coming out of the fear of missing out phase to the actual implementation and execution phase, kind of inadvertently, this public-private partnership has shown the world how HPE and AMD together can accelerate time to value, yeah. which is 100%. what people are- That's the most important thing. Yeah. So, right? you're, so building, building sort of prepackaged systems that you know work, that's one thing that you're doing for the time to value question, but 100%. what are some of the other things that HPE does to help people in that, in that execution phase that we all see is happening going into 2026. Right, I mean, some of the important things is bringing in deployment and our services. So we are, we've been doing this for 50 years. In fact, Cray is 50 years old. Um, and so being able to set up these large systems quickly, you know, so we're deploying, installing, and then service them, keeping them up, because you need to keep them up to run the models. Right, and so I think HPE is well known as um, a leader in this space because we've had so much experience doing that. But then we also have a software stack that we work on to make sure that it's a curated stack. You can work in data management is also one of the key things in getting your AI pilots to work, having you know mature data. So it's not garbage in, garbage out for right. your model. You know, it's the infrastructure and that's where we work together to make sure that. And then we find the third thing that's really important to be successful in AI is a clear strategy. Some of the things is you say 95% didn't work or whatever the number is. A lot of times when you ask them what does success look like, they kind of give you that deer in the headlights. Like, oh, yeah. well I was supposed to do an AI pilot, you know? Right. Yeah. So it's, it's um, just getting a little bit more mature on that whole AI process and the steps that it takes. Yeah. So Safi, how should people think about AMD's role in this? You know, you can, complete reductionism would be like AMD, okay, here it is, here it is, I need eight of them. Um, that's not a complete thing in yeah. and of itself. So yeah. how, do you, how do you see AMD's role in that decreasing time to value? I mean, so part of it is figuring out the right partners because as this technology continues to grow, more people will be able to bring more things to customers to accelerate time to value. Um, we have to look at the ISVs we're working with. We have to look at the hardware partners like HPE that we're working with, things like government entities. Um, you know, we're a founding member of the Ultra Ethernet Consortium, of UA Link, all these sorts of things that bring in the sharpest minds in the industry. We have Broadcom in there and many others. So in terms of time to value, I mean, imagine the number of companies that are now engaged on solving this problem has just grown exponentially. So as the silicon provider, you know, our role is to build out the hardware and provide things like reference designs like Helios that we're doing to make sure that the best people can come in and do what they do best on what we do best. And also give AMD a lot of credit for accelerating its software development cadence with right. things like Rockham that yeah. drastically improved time to market, mm -hmm. time to value, yeah. even in our own testing, right, that, we, that we've seen internally. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, historically, you know, that's an area that we've needed to improve and we've doubled down. We've made quite a few acquisitions in that space and that's also helped accelerate um, our cadence on that. So yeah, thank you for recognizing that and, and we're proud of the progress that, uh, that we've made so far. I had a question for you, Trish. Okay. I had heard that HPE is like the third largest data center services company we are. in the world, is that right? Yes, we I are. I did not know that, so I didn't realize that was such a huge part of It is a business. big part, and it's been part of the business for decades, I think like 15 years, so maybe not decades, but you know, longer than a decade. And um, yes, they came out with the AI Mod Pod as the marketing term, which you know makes me think 70s, I'm kind of wearing that <laughs> genre, so maybe I'm living the part. Did you think they just dropped crates off at loading docks? Well, there's a lot of <laughs> hardware suppliers in the I know. <laughs> data center business, and there's a lot of service providers, but I think when yeah. people think of HPE, mostly they think of hardware. They do, that's right. true. And they yep. don't think of like 
HPE being a data center services company. Well, but I mean, huge. we want to do the full system, right? Yeah. You've got, and again, it's that time to science, time to value. Yeah. So deploying, I don't know if, um, even in Antonio's keynote, he talked about UK Bristol. And so if you look, if you talk to Simon MacDosh Smith, who was responsible for that project, he said, I could have it up and running from like a parking lot to a full system producing science in a year. Where if I, and it was a third the cost. Yeah. Where if I had waited, it would have taken me more like three years and I would have spent a lot more. Well, the race is on. These are very, very exciting times. I think it's, I, I, I think it's amazing to see this Genesis mission thing sort of come across my iPad, if you will, and then be able to sit down less than two weeks later and talk to two people who are actually involved in getting these things up and running. Yeah. Um, the, the global race is absolutely on, the sovereign AI environment's popping up. Um, it's a great time to, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm, I'm choking up. It's a great time, <laughs> it's a great time to be in this it's business. It's an emotional topic. It is yes. very emotional, it is very emotional. Uh, Asafi Fishoff, AMD, thank you so much. And Trish, always great to see you. Of Trish Dam Kroger from HPE and from HPE D Discover 2025 with my sidekick, Ryan Trout. I'm Dave Nicholson for 6.5 On The Road. Thanks for tuning in and stay tuned for more exciting content.